Hello everyone. I'm Thomas Jansson, soft, principal software engineer at Elchirp. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today and honored to be among so many great speakers. And over the next 20 minutes, I will talk about our transformation that we made at Elchirp, going from a bloated, slow e commerce site to a fast, simplified e commerce setup powered by Next.js and Vercel. This is not just a story about technology. It's also about performance, simplicity, iteration velocity, and delivering value to actual customers in all our countries. First, I'll give you a quick roadmap of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, where did we all start doing this? And then I will talk about where did we end up and, and how, how did it impact both the commercial side of it and also uh, performance. And I'll also show you a little bit more on the process and technology changes that we made and, and how that uh, played out. Lastly, I'm going to show you what we think we will be doing the next couple of months, I would say. So let's start. Since we're in the US, I assume that most of you have not heard about Elshop. Uh, so I'll give you a quick introduction about Elshop to understand the scale of the challenge and also the impact of the improvements that we have made. You can think of Elshop as the best buy of the Nordics. We are the largest electronic retailer in the Nordic region, meaning Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Finland. We have about 27% of the market, so I think a pretty large market share. We have more than 400 physical stores as well. So the store employees are among our best customers when it comes to the e-commerce site as well, because we can get great feedback from them. We have some franchise in Greenland, Faroe Islands, and uh, Denmark, oh, Iceland as well. The e-commerce site is powering only the four core countries. We have around 7 billion edge requests every single month, or more than that, as I checked last, last, uh, last night. From that, we get around 330,000 orders, which is equal to 10 orders almost uh, every minute. And with this kind of volume, performance is crucial. If we want to keep the number one spot in, in our market, we have to have great performance. And that was not the case. So let's see where we all started. So what you see on the screen now, this was actually our starting point. I have not like, masked out the price or the description on this uh, carousel. When the product carousel uh, loaded, in our old uh, e-commerce site, this what, could have, uh, what you saw. And that could be for like 20 seconds or more. And that's not acceptable for, for any e-commerce site, I would argue, uh, especially if you're supposed to be the leader in your market. And this is a huge conversation, a conversion killer. And our customers were not shy about telling us about it. We saw comments on Reddit almost every single month. There were comments about, this site is so slow, so I ended up going somewhere else. We know, even had internal employees working in the store saying, oh, I feel your pain. And, and that's not where we want to go. So we know that we had to act and do something about it. So fast forward to today. What you see now is the core by vitals, as seen from a Vercel Speed Insight report that we have. We are now on almost a perfect 100 on mobile. It's only 99, but we want to get there. If we go to desktop, we are, uh, have a score of 100, but 70% of our traffic is from mobile, so we focus on mobile when we look at the performance scores. But this is not just about like, performance and, and like, for our, our developers to be super proud of what we have delivered. This has real commercial improvements as well. We see better engagement, better conversions, and a smoother experience overall. Looking at the commercial metrics the last 12 months, we have seen that they have been better than the previous 12 months every like, month by month uh, comparison. I wouldn't say like, we have done or the cost for everything, but I do think the faster uh, e-commerce site has definitely helped. And the most important part of that is just making it fast. 
making fast and smooth for the customers really help. Here's where the difference will become really clear. I'm going to play you three video clips at the same time. On the left side, you have the site as it was when we started. And in the middle, we have it running on Next.js on Vercel, but we have a CDN on top of it. And then the last one to the right is um, on Vercel without a CDN. So now I started the video, and as you can see, like the first one, nothing basically happens when you click. You start loading and loading and waiting. The one in the middle is definitely the faster. Not still like super fast, but faster. Is some, some delay when it comes to images. And the last one is fast. I think it, that, uh, the last one is probably finished soon. This is basically from a product discovery, adding something to a cart, and going to the checkout. And the last one is finished now, I think. And that took about 30 seconds for that one. The first one takes two minutes. So that's a quite huge improvement when it comes to, to customer experience and, and how, how easy we can make it for our customers. So how much did we improve? Look at the core web vitals. We have made a 100% made improvement on, on layout shift. And that, I think, should be any e-commerce site should strive to have that, basically meaning zero layout shift. Uh, because you should service side render most of your content to get that. But we also improved the IMP with 64%. So the application now really responds to the user when it clicks this link or this button instead of having a spinner for 20 seconds. Then we also have the LCP, which we improved by 51%. So now you get also a much faster loading time of most of the content on the page. The last metric, the 75%, is based on the previous slide. So the 75% improvement on this pro product discovery and going to the checkout. That's huge. And, and also, our customers definitely notice it. I, I, haven't, I haven't read any bad Reddit post the last year, so I think it's, we're doing quite well right now. The technical upgrade we did was super important. But a lot, of, a lot of things that unlocked everything we see was also changing how we worked with all this. So look at some of the process changes we made, uh, enabled by Next.js and Vercel. Before, when we had the old site, everything we did required a detailed specifications. As we re reviewed, it was bounced between requirement engineers to designers to developers to stakeholders and back down, back to, to developers again, and, and on and on. And that slows us down quite a lot when it comes to process. So we flipped things around quite a lot. Now we focus on getting things live as fast as possible with minimal uh, friction. Of course, we do have some tickets. I don't say we don't do anything, but we try to minimize like, how much uh, specification we really need, and instead try to get feedback on actual running code. And the technology we have now makes it possible to do that quite easy. So we have created a much faster feedback loop, also with a much more collaboration. And that is, frankly, also more fun. Because now we're actually working together and, and not only passing JIRA tickets back and forth. And the result was just more speed in development, also better performance, and higher quality. Another thing is iteration velocity. For me, this is much more important than automated test. I'm not saying we don't do testing. We do write tests, quite a lot of tests, unit tests and end-to-end -end tests using Playwright. But we don't treat test coverage as a goal, because it doesn't make sense, at least in, in my view. Iteration velocity on the hand is king when it comes to this, because what we want to have is the feedback from our stakeholders and from our customers as fast as possible. And also, like, testing is good. It's good to have for regression. But when you're doing new things, you actually write tests for what you know and what you think, or how do you think the customer will use your product. But you don't catch what they customers really do, because they, they will like, misbehave and do crazy things with your applications. So that's also why it's so much more important to have high iteration velocity, because then you can act on the customer behavior rather than the, the, the tests. 
And it's especially important when it comes to front-end, because front-end, in my opinion, is slightly more fragile, especially if you look in the end-to-end -end perspective, because everything in the back-end can also uh, can change, and that will impact the front-end. And iteration velocity also gives us quite a lot of feedback. And there's a really good positive feedback loop here. Because now we have this high velocity, we are confident that we can deploy. And every time we deploy, we get even more confidence in our deployment process. So we deploy even more. And that's super good. But it's not like I'm not trying to chase these high deployment numbers or anything. For me, it's about removing fear. Any developer in my team should be confident that they can deploy almost any time during the day. And we optimize for that. So we have a fast and very safe deploys. And then we also, in Vercel, have the instant rollback feature. We haven't used that a lot, but we have. But that also gives you confidence that you can roll back if you have to. And this has led to much better outcomes at least for our customers as I see it. And if you look back for the previous years, when we had the Black Week and Black Friday, we had a really long code freeze period. Last year, I think I deployed like four or five times during Black Friday, because that's how confident we are in our process now. And for us, there are three big uh, enablers when it comes to this. First, we have Next.js. Next.js, to me, is sort of make it possible to create application features without having to think about how is this application being built and Webpack and all those kind of things. Like the JavaScript ecosystem has been way too complex for quite some time. And having these same defaults makes it so much easier to, to work fast. Vercel does the same thing as Next.js, in my opinion, but on an infrastructure level. Now I don't have to think about how to scale and how to set up like, the build pipelines, et cetera. That's just there for me, and it, it works very, very well. And the last thing that we have used a lot is feature flags. We are using LaunchDarkly that have really great integration with uh, Edge Config on Vercel. So then we can re read all the flags in the middleware and generate a segment so we can create static pages for all our pages, basically. And this also enables our internal stakeholders to try out features way before we give it to our customers. So we sometimes ship unfinished code to production just to be able to test it in production, because our test data is not always as good as it should be. So being able to put to production unfinished code so we can test it, is, it gives us so much value. And combination of this has given both speed, safety, and the confidence we need to iterate super fast in an enterprise environment. I will never forget that one of our sta stakeholders told me, this usually takes seven weeks. Now it takes one day. I'm not like the actual metrics still uh, are accurate, but that's what he said. And this is like with one fourth of the team that we had before. So now we have only like, I think we're five developers at the moment because of one on maternity leave. But we're a much smaller team than we had before and also have dropped a lot of the process. So we didn't just get faster, we get leaner, and also more focused and much more effective. And e-commerce, or we're in our industry, is a real low margin industry. So for us, uh, everything we can save is awesome. So this is a huge commercial win. So let's look at, look at the technology changes that we made. And on a high level, the thing we actually did was simplify things. That, that's basically, we tried to remove as much complexity and, and try to make things just simpler. So let's walk through how the architecture have evolved over the time from the old solution to the new one running only on Next. In the beginning, we had an Angular application running in Kubernetes, and then we also had uh, Apollo as a query layer, and uh, yeah. And that's like the technology for that, that might sound like a good technology solution to create a spa application. I don't think that's the right tool for an e-commerce site where you want to have server-side rendered pages, et cetera. So we went to Next.js, 
and have that on their cell. We still had an external CDN on top in the beginning, mainly to be able to route to the old and new solution so we could have an A-B test during the rollout. And also because like, the checkout process was also in the old solution for quite some time. Uh, but after a while, when we were confident and we had implemented everything, we removed also the external CDN. And now the architecture on the right-hand side is much more simpler. We have like, decreased our Kubernetes cluster size a lot, and we don't really think too much about operations on our cell. It just works. And the application now uh, serves ready-made HTML from the Next.js. And this gives us much better performance. This part here is quite interesting as I see it. I was very surprised and it was quite satisfying when we removed the external CDN. I think you can guess when we removed the CDN by looking at this graph. The improvement from time to first byte when we dropped the external CDN was massive. I did, not, I did not expect it to be this big. I expected it to have an improvement, for sure, because it is an extra network step we need to make through an external CDN. But what we saw was 40% decrease in time to first byte. And we also get a like, much more consistent uh, time to first byte with less variations. And I mean, this is, is so important for us because time to first byte, in my opinion, also impacts IMP and LZP. So this was the last thing that actually pushed us over to uh, green and all core vitals. So what next for us going forward? Like, we have done a lot of work now, and we, we are super happy with what we have, but I don't think we are done. So there are a couple of areas that we're going to focus on going forward. The next evolution for us is slicing up the application. As you saw during the keynote today, uh, there were presentations about micro front ends. We are definitely going to go there uh, and, and create more structure in our application. And this will enable us also to have more parallel development, which would be another way for us to speed up development because we can onboard more teams to this. The way we do it is like multi zone approach for Next.js, but we will most likely leverage the Vercel micro front ends because that's native in Vercel and we get a lot of tooling support in the Vercel toolbar. The next thing we'll focus on is part of rendering and caching. We're just waiting for it to be stable. We've been waiting for quite some time now. I hope it will be soon. For us, we are have a push for personalization going forward. And having part of rendering would definitely help us when it comes to personalized content and still serving static content at the same time to, with fast responses to our customers. And combining this with use cache directive, as the Luba talked about earlier, will be like a huge simplification for us compared to what we're doing now. We can still do this today, but it requires some more complexity than I would like to, to manage. So that's the story so far. We moved from a slow, complex stack to something leaner, faster, and easier to maintain. And we're already seeing the commercial and also the customer benefits from what we have done. What I hope you take away is that simplicity scales. When the right, with the right tools and the right mindsets, you can move fast, even in a large enterprise organization. And there's still more for us to explore, of course. I talked about personalization through part of rendering, and also how we're going to slice up, create the micro front ends, and, and stream with also part of rendering. But now we're much more better positioned to do all these kind of things uh, with confidence. And if you are considering a similar transformation, try to find something where you can lean into the defaults. And hopefully those are sensible defaults, which I think Next.js and Vercel has. And prioritize iteration speed. And don't be afraid to remove as much complexity as you can. Not just add more and more layers. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to grab me outside here, and I can answer anything, hopefully. Thank you.